Welcome all to the Snail Trail 4x4 podcast. If you like going off-roading in Toyotas, wrenching on Toyotas, camping in Toyotas, and maybe even poking a little bit of fun in Toyotas, and of course, hearing about how great rallying in a Bronco is, come on, is that really that great? <laughs> then this may be the podcast for you. That's right, ladies and germs. My name is Tyler, and joining me for another episode is Mr. Jimmy Jet. And a couple other ladies that will come in here in a little bit once we get to the main topic. But for now, Jimmy, how the hell are you? I'm doing very well. Thanks mm-hmm. for asking. How are you? Doing pretty good. Good. Uh, you guys heard about my my dilemma, my non-wheeling weekend last Thursday. But um, this episode here is with uh, a couple ladies running the Rebel Rally. Yes. They exciting. actually are going out like in a couple days and the Rebel starts this week. Yeah, it does. Later so. this week, they're leaving uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, the event starts just shortly after that. Yeah. So it's exciting uh, to have them on the podcast, share mm-hmm. their wealth of knowledge and things that are going on so close to the event. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's some pretty cool stuff. Jimmy and I regrettably did not know a whole lot about the Rebel Rally. We understood the gist of it, but they we got into some pretty fun details as to what these women actually have to learn what how to do. And a bunch of the tasks that they have to do during this competition. I know. So. Yeah. It's a very in-depth episode, which I was kind of at first, I'm like, yeah, it's the Rebel Rally. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, we'll talk about it. It'd be great to share, you know, yeah. a woman only rally. Of course, we'll support that. Yeah. And then when we started diving into this details, like totally intrigued. Oh, <laughs> I'm yeah. totally in. Yeah. It's way more than I thought it was. <laughs> So anyways, really cool. Some cool stuff that's coming to your ear holes today. Uh, but before we do, we have, uh, of course, updates. We're out of September now. We're into October. So we have the October giveaway going on, which is two gift boxes. Pretty cool stuff. I believe we're going to be telling you guys this Thursday what's in those gift boxes. You think so? I think so. They Better. should be out. Okay. Um, we'll see if that's enough time from when we get them out to when people receive them. Yeah. But crossing my fingers, next episode this week should be talking about gift boxes. We'll see if we make that happen. And then let's see, we've got for the month of September. And so, yeah, all the FNGs and everything will be uh, this Thursday for sure. So last Thursday, this is Monday. So the next recording episode will be Thursday after this one, right? The next next time we sit down and record. So- uh, do we have enough time to sit down and do all the FNGs and everything? <laughs> sure. Okay. And then this coming up Thursday as well, we definitely will be getting you guys the FNGs, the birthdays, all that good stuff. We'll do some reviews like we did last Thursday. So we'll get caught up on everything. Let's see. What other, other giveaways do we got going on? Well, we always have the reviews happening. So go mm-hmm. over to Apple Podcasts, leave us a review over there, and you will automatically get entered for... A giveaway pack. Once we hit 700 reviews, we're giving away uh, some swag packs and Onyx Off-Road Elite membership. Nice. And then once we get to 750 reviews, we're giving away a set of tires from Yokohama Tire. Sweet. Super excited for that. Yep. Some cool stuff. Um, some from really some from some really my dyslexia is bad today. From some really cool companies in the off-road industry. So thank you guys for uh, engaging with the podcast and seeing us out at events, saying hi and letting these companies know that we exist because then we get to do cool stuff for you with the company. So let's see anything else before we jump into this episode. No, I think that's it. I think um, we had a very fun interview with Mm -hmm. these two. So I say we jump on over. Cool. Everybody go ahead and grab your favorite drinks. Make sure you have your cooler cloths and we'll be right on back with today's campfire discussion with Lisa and Lonnie. If you have a third gen forerunner and want 16 inches of wheel travel without cutting into your sheet metal, check out Four Wheel Underground's brand new cantilever suspension featuring an integrated anti-sway bar and turn by dial disconnect. Don't sacrifice performance and comfort for the sake of wheel travel. Get both with our new cantilever system at fourwheelunderground.com. Oh, welcome back, ladies and gentle ladies. We're here today for our campfire discussion. We're sitting around a lovely campfire here. Uh, thank you for providing that, Jimmy, today. 
Yeah, anytime. Jimmy no the Pyromaniac. But we got two ladies here in the house that are doing something really cool. Um, we've talked a little bit about this contest, this competition before in the past. We've had a few people on that got to chat a little about it, a little bit about it. But I don't think we're going to, we had. Uh, this unique perspective that you two are bringing to the competition and to the podcast here. So I guess without further ado, we have Lisa here in the studio who I don't think you've been on the podcast before. No, I have not. You have not. Um, but your husband has been on the podcast before, I think, yes. um, on the Rubicon trip. Yeah, I, that and we did one while you were on Baby Leaf. Oh, okay. Nice. So your husband is the, the gladiator on 28s. We downgraded him. Oh no, it's not no longer 29. <laughs> no longer 29s. He's now on 28. Every time he says forties, we move him down a level. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. oh. <laughs> so soon it's, I guarantee soon it'll be 27s. Yeah. 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 Most likely. <laughs> so you are Lisa. That's Lisa's voice. Mm -hmm. You guys are hearing there. And then we also have Lonnie here in the studio. Yes. Hello. What's a little bit about, I, I want to get into uh, obviously what you guys are doing. So what we're here to talk about today, which you guys are running the rebel rally. Yes. Next week, uh, next week. It's that soon. You have a, a nice a Bronco out there, which we'll get into a little bit too. How did you guys get and decide that you wanted to do the rebel? Lisa, you've done the rebel before. Yes. I did it in 2022. Okay. And my partner was FJ Anna. Anna Lewis, which mm -hmm. you have had on a walk around. Yeah, yeah. I did a walk around on YouTube with her, mm -hmm. with her rig. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How was, how was just a quick, quick, super quick highlight. How was that competition? How was that rally? It was good. I felt really lucky to be able to go with a veteran as a mm -hmm. rookie. She gave me so much information before we even got there that I felt really well prepared for what mm -hmm. I was walking into, as well prepared as any rookie could, uh -huh. because there were so many new things and then also new twists to the competition as well that nobody saw coming. So... <laughs> It was great. Um, we did have some mechanical issues um, with the FJ Cruiser that, you know, we kind of limped through the first three days. But then uh, mechanics finally figured that all out and we finished the rally and we had a really great time. And I just really wanted to go back, kind of dig deeper into it, into the more intricacies of the competition. I primarily drove during 2022. Okay. And um, now I'm coming back to navigate solely. Oh, so. Cool. It's a, it's very hard. It's a different role. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very hard, very intense. Uh -huh. Um, but I'm excited for it. Very cool. Really quick, just for people who don't know out there, what is the rebel rally? Both of you. I mean, what from, in your words, what is the rebel rally? Cause I know Jimmy and I have a, a definition of a, a perspective of the rebel rally, but we're two dudes. <laughs> so I'm curious, what does the rebel rally mean to two ladies that are, uh, that are um, competing in the rally? I mean, in the broadest terms, the mm -hmm. Rebel is a map and compass navigation rally that just happens to be for women only. And it's the longest off-road rally in the United States. And I think even North America. I'm not sure about that one. Wow. But yeah, the, the Rebel is a chance to totally disconnect and hyper focus on something for eight days. <laughs> and it's, a, you know, it's a huge mental challenge, physical mm -hmm. challenge. It's, it's sort of, it, it's an endurance rally. Emily Miller, the founder says it's a proving ground for people, products and vehicles. And I mean, that's absolutely true. It pushes you to your limit, mm -hmm. pushes your vehicle to the limit and um, all those nice little products you get from sponsors, which is those <laughs> to the limit too. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, Lisa? I would agree. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but it's it's very precise. It's definitely a precision rally mm -hmm. where you're not just trying to get close to a checkpoint. You are trying to find it within meters. Okay. Um, and the whole rally is in kilometers. Okay. Um, I mean, you can convert if you want to take the time. No, but, we have uh, no time. <laughs> no time. <laughs> the other challenge is time management. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah. There's uh -huh. only so much time on stage that we have, and that's what it's called. Um, as soon as you get off the line, you have a certain amount of time that you're allowed to be out before you're allowed to cross the finish line or able to cross the finish line. 
And yeah, so that's called a stage. And okay. I mean, the other thing is that, um, you know, most motorsports, 99% of motorsports, you are trying to be fast, right? You're yeah. trying to get there as quick as possible, yeah. faster than everybody else. Yep. And that's actually detrimental in the rebel. Really? <laughs> yeah. You, um, you don't want to drive faster than you can see. You okay. don't want to drive past your checkpoints. Yeah. You know, you want to be precise and you want to take care of your vehicle and your partner and you want to get all the points. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what is the point system based on? Like what, what you, you said, you mentioned driving past your checkpoints. I imagine there's points for least amount of mileage. No, that's, that's more like what they do in the gazelle rally. Okay. Uh, in the rebel, it's not the least mileage. It's the accuracy as Lisa said. So you're trying to, with a, with just a map and a compass, you mm. know, you lock up all your cell phones and GPS devices, you uh -huh. disable the GPS in your vehicle. And with that map and compass and like some other tools, scales and all those things, you plot all these points and you find your way to them just with your compass and distance and heading. Okay. And there's three kinds of checkpoints and you need to get to those checkpoints and be as accurate as possible. So there's okay. greens that are mandatory. They're, you know, the highest amount of points because they want you to stay on that route. Okay. And uh, yeah, if you miss one of those, you miss the rest of the points for the day. <laughs> so it's okay. like, it's like, <laughs> that is very high stakes. You've got to yeah. get those greens. And I forget what percentage they are of the points, but it's like they're a pretty high percentage. It's a pretty like high percentage. They're yeah. usually around twenty plus points. Yeah, per checkpoint. Per checkpoint. Okay. And then there's blue checkpoints that are marked with a flag or sometimes just a little pole that you know the staff, the rally officials like to put those in like bushes and stuff. <laughs> you have to go searching for them. or around a corner. <laughs> you or think like, you're there. Yeah. And then <laughs> Just around a rock. There it is. Okay. Or like, you know, there'll be a flag and is it your blue flag or does it belong to a different class or does it belong uh -huh. to a, you know, a different group? Cause they split us up in different, different groups and different checkpoints. So you can't follow people. You can't, okay. you know, and, and those are worth the second to the most points, like between, you know, 10 and 15 or sometimes even like seven or whatever, like, mm -hmm. you know, and then there's black checkpoints and those have no marker. Oh. Those are just, it's just a, a point in the desert that is imaginary and it exists with, you know, the within the GPS the system race, yeah. and that's it. So how are you guys marking when you, when you get to these points? You have a little like satellite clicker. Okay. So there's like, you're completely disconnected from like your phone and your devices, but there's actually a lot of technology that helps you helps the rally record all this information. Gotcha. I would imagine if you guys don't have the technology, the race has to be able to keep track oh, yeah. of you somehow. So <laughs> yeah. So when we okay. get to tech inspection, we get a tracker that's put, put on top of our vehicle so mm -hmm. that they always know where we are. Okay. And then we also get a satellite phone in case we need to call in to base camp for assistance or an okay. official or anything like that. Or, an emergency. or if you think right. a flag well, is missing. depends on the emergency <laughs> oh. in a true yeah. emergency, you know, we take out our cell phones from the bubble wrap and, you know, call 911. Oh, gotcha. But for actual emergency services, but if it's something that, you know, the rally can handle. Like we just ran out of fuel and we need to call in for mechanical assistance, which is a penalty. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> then we use that satellite phone for that. Um, okay. and then we're given a handheld clicker, um, which we will click when we think that we're there at the checkpoint. Okay. And then that gives us our GPS coordinates of where we are. So mm -hmm. we pay for that information. So of course we record that information and then, or if we're completely lost, yeah. You can, you can also click. click it as, and then you could get a penalty if okay. you're outside of the if you scoring get a wide zone. Miss. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. It's called a wide miss um, and it's negative 10 points. And then you, of course, take that information to find out where you are. Um, oh, interesting. So okay. then you plot where you are and you can use that to get to where you need to be. Yeah. Or sure. like maybe you're like, wow, we're way, way, way far than we need to be. Yeah. We need to go straight to that next green. <laughs> yeah. Because if you miss a green, you miss the rest of the points for the day. Right. Yeah. So if there's an instance that like you're way off course, will they actually call you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you end up in another state and they're like, and, hey guys. Well, <laughs> yeah. They will let you go fairly far, but I don't think they'd let you go that far. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's definitely been incidents where uh, there's a, a couple of course officials that are like the sweepers. And they're there, they're, you know, cause they all know where we are. Right. Uh, yeah. Sure. So, and they're, you know, kind of hang back. And if you see one of those guys there, like, you're like, we need to figure out where we are. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. 
we're not where we should be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a Got little it. gentle nudge of, hmm. Like Somebody if you see that guy, like, oof, it is not good. <laughs> Got it. So you, you're driving along, you're trying to get to points. The green are, are they well marked? Oh yeah. Huge, huge flag. Okay. And, um, and they're manned and by they're staff. always manned by staff. Got it. Okay. And those okay. are also like official notice boards. So they'll have information there. Like, you know, you need to take this bypass or, you know, there's a, don't some go other here. Part. Exactly. Right. right. And that'll be posted information. The officials, like the rally staff aren't allowed to talk to us about, uh, you know, the rally. Yeah. So they're affectionately like can, called rocks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm a rock. They're like I'm a rock in the desert. Okay. Uh, if you try to ask something, you know, that's too specific, they'll, they'll answer that's, with I'm a rock. I'm a rock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you can also ask them if they'd like some fresh baked cookies and you know, why not? you know, help them out. They're there. They don't need to be there. Give yeah. them sure. something nice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you want to look forward Here's to seeing some fresh you. baked cookies. Which way is the next point? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then they're like rocks. Don't eat cookies. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So they're well manned or they are manned, well marked, uh, green points. The blue points are semi hidden, uh, little flags or poles or something out mm-hmm. in the area. They're and there less- could be a pole that's just there, you know, sure. and has nothing okay. to do with us. And it's, just, you know, it, you see something blue and you get excited and you want to click and like, no, it's not. Okay. So. Do the race <laughs> officials put those out as temptations or is it just happened to Supposedly happenstance? there's no trick blue flags. I don't okay. like that terminology, but that's what I refer to them as. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. And then there's black imaginary locations that you're just trying to get mm-hmm. the closest to. So you're driving to each one of these spots. You're trying to get as close as possible via the GPS. Uh, what about time? Is is yeah. finishing the course so, a timed mm-hmm. option as well? Like you hit all these points and you finished by a certain time. Is that a bonus or is there more points involved there? Or how does that work? So when you come back to base camp, the base camp has points. Base camp is a checkpoint and every checkpoint has an open and a closed time. So you can't get there too early and you can't get there too late. Uh. So that's the other challenge is the time management. You okay. can't spend, you know, an hour dialing in a black and, you know, confirming, confirming, confirming and confirming where you are. Like you need to, you know, click, click it and, and hit it. Yeah. 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 And then every team is given the same amount of time. So even if you're off the start line earlier, your time to finish you know, goes off of your start time. So if we have 10 and a half hours that day, that's all you Everybody get. Everybody else 10 and a yeah. half hours so that day. Okay. you may start earlier, but then teams that start later get to finish later. Yeah. What's your, your, your time period of acceptable variation to like, so if you say you have 10 and a half hours that day, are you, do you have 10 and a half hours plus or minus half an hour or no? no. Well, what's the the window? Second. Yeah. What's the window that you can come in Cause you said there's an open and close oh, time for finishing. Got it, got it. Yeah. So I think base camp doesn't open until a certain time. So you can't come back too early. Like they want, they want you to get all the point. They want you to be out there and trying and doing, trying to get the route. And- yeah. Gotcha. So the open and close times, they change per checkpoint and per day. And those will be given in our, our CP checkpoint guides. Guide. Yeah. Okay. Checkpoint guide, CP guide every morning. <laughs> okay. And those are released at different times, depending on when your start time is. Okay. So you don't get to go get your checkpoints until a certain time in the morning. The earliest is 5 a.m. And then it's um, staggered based on your start time off the line. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Well, cool. So that's that's a good overview of the Rebel Rally. So now I'm curious, why, why for you two, why get into the Rebel Rally? What was your driving force that made you say, I really want to do this? Well, I've wanted to do it since I think at the inception, it just sounds like such a fun adventure. Mm-hmm. When it first started, I learned about it from Nicole from Total Chaos. Okay. Um, Total Chaos is a big sponsor of the rally and a big supporter. And um, they work together to help plan the course as well. And so she told me about the competition, told me how intense it was and how also amazing it was. You get to go to all these really cool places. Um, and like the most incredible vistas, like the route gets planned um, so that you can see like the West too. Cause some people yeah. travel from other countries across yeah. the United States. There's an international designation. So they really want you to be able to have a good time and experience it as well. And so certain checkpoints will be put at 
specific locations so that you can see something awesome. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like my year, we got to go to like Diana's punch bowl, which was really cool. It's this huge pit, you know, (laughs) and there's a checkpoint right there. Uh So they kind of put them in cool places for you to get to experience. Some cool points of interest along the way. Yeah. It's not just a, a green flag out in the middle of the desert where you, <laughs> you're like, okay, cool. But next. <laughs> well, and you sort uh, of start to get a, um, an instinct, like mm-hmm. if, especially if it's a black, you're like, oh yeah, sh- like this looks awesome. They definitely put a black they here. Like this a, is okay. it. And then gotcha. you, you know, you click and you know, you get the little, int- you know, reward of like being right. Enjoy or being a good guesser. Or, or wrong. Or you get the, like, well, they should have put it here because this is gorgeous. <laughs> You just keep track of that click. So when you get back to base camp, you're like, you guys should put one here the, later yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> put it on the feedback form. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So adventure, excitement, getting to see some cool stuff. Yeah. And then uh-huh. the off-roading, you know, I haven't, when the fir- rally first started, I hadn't really explored the deserts that much. And so the rally takes place in mostly desert locations because you're able to navigate off of mountains and, mm-hmm. you know, features in the woods in Northern California, you're not able to do that. Not very well. And, yeah. You know, many other places in the U S you're not able to do that really well. So it's really unique. It's really special. And I also wanted to compete a bun- against and with a bunch of really awesome women. And it's mm-hmm. a women's only rally. And when I first started getting into off-road, there weren't many women in the space. I was often mm-hmm. the only female on a trail or at a camp. And mm-hmm. so I kind of wanted to make friends and, you know, learn about all these other women and what they're into. And so I wanted to compete for forever and I prioritized growing a family and having children. And now it's my turn to have some fun. (laughs) 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 Nice. Lonnie, what about you? I, through work, I met a class 11 race team and, um, you know, they're, they were, they competed in the Baja 1000 several times and, that just like captured my imagination. And mm. from that moment, I was like, I, I, cause I, I'm a video producer and I'm like, I've got to produce a documentary on of class 11 race team, you know, doing the Baja <laughs> 1000. And okay. the next year my client texted me like six in the morning. He's like, we need to go follow this class 11 race team. Are you guys in? And I'm like, yes, hell yes. <laughs> the next morning. What a coincidence. <laughs> no, no. Like a year oh, later. Yeah, it was okay, like a gotcha. year later. Gotcha. Um, did I say the next? No, no. Okay. Um, and a it was in a morning, a year, a year in a, in a mor- morning. God, exactly. Okay. It was almost exactly. Yeah. I missed that. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was like the next year. And I'm like, I didn't even check with my boss or anybody. I'm like, yes, we're in like, and I had uh, three weeks to prep a crew and a vehicle and figure out how we're going to cover, you know, this thousand mile race. Did you also follow them in a Volkswagen bug? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. No. <laughs> um, at the time, uh, our work car was a 2009 Honda Pilot. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh-huh. So we, uh, you know, I took it to our mechanic and I'm like, this is what we're doing. Like go through everything. And like, I had never off-roaded before. Like I, w- but I was just. We need some long, some long arms, some oh triple my gosh. bypasses. Yeah, on a Honda go. Pilot, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but we got some big beefy tires and we got a light bar. I had them put some like performance shocks on it. Uh, just, I mean, the like the very bare minimum. I'm like, and this thing cannot break in Mexico because yeah. no one's going to know how to fix it. Yeah. I certainly didn't know how to fix it. So we did that job and it was incredible. I, I talked to this you know, my team into doing it. It was rad. And, um, the co-driver for one of the race teams was Emmy Hall, who has competed in the Rebella since the very first year. And I met her at contingency. And I mean, if you know, Emmy Hall, she can like enthusiastically tell you about anything. She's wearing a Rebel rally hat. Okay. And I'm like, Oh, I absolutely want to do that. At the time, my vehicle, my daily was a 2007 mini Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> so it was going to take a while. Um, mm-hmm. but I always wanted a Bronco and there's, there had always been like the threats of like, we're going to, we're going to make a Bronco again. We're going to make a Bronco uh-huh. again. You know, all the rumors that you hear when you're in, in automotive. And, um, my, my boss would text me from like the Detroit auto show. Like, okay, they, they put up a logo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, they talked about it a little bit in the presentation, you know? And I'm like, yes, it's happening. It's happening. 
And then, but I, so I didn't want to just buy any truck and like, just start. Like I knew I wanted the Bronco. Mm -hmm. So I had to wait till that came out and COVID happened in the interim. And, um, I, but I still, I put, uh, I put my reservation in the first day, the reservation system opened and (laughs) put my order in the first day I could. And I Uh took delivery October 21. And at that point, like just going through COVID and everything that happened, I was like, I don't really need to put myself in that survival situation. Like I've already done that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, you know, fighting for survival this during COVID. Mm-hmm. But then I, I went to a few trainings in 22 and learned a lot about how to, how the competition works. Cause you, you sort of don't know, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's so such a complex beast. Well, that, and they change things every year exactly. and they keep a lot of stuff hidden from you guys until you yeah. get to tech so it's like, how do you, how do you figure out if that's something you really want to do? It's a exactly. lot of money to do the rebel. Exactly. So yeah. like, how do you, how do you figure that out that, that this is worth the money and worth doing? So, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's really tough, but it, it is an incredibly good group of women to hang out with and learn from. And everybody's very generous with their time and their information, but there's sort of no way to kind of prepare anybody for this. It's uh-huh. such a yeah. unique thing. But the next, Lisa's year, actually, before I knew her, a friend of mine invited me to go to the gala, which is the big celebration after the rally. Mm -hmm. And I'd watched the whole rally and I watched, you know, the challenges Lisa had with her vehicle. And I had followed FJ Anna because that's a sweet FJ. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) And so I like knew of Lisa and like, and just being there at that gala, I'm like, okay, no, I I need to do this. I really want to do this. And I went back to my tent after celebrating with everybody and I registered that night. Yeah. (laughs) Nice. So (laughs) you... uh, competed in 2023. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We competed last year with a different partner, not with Lisa. Right. Um, in the Bronco? In the Bronco. It's yeah. a Bronco sport, right? No. It's a real, it's a real Bronco? It's a real Bronco. It's a real boy. Okay. Yeah. It's, um, I got a, it's I got a, a sour look at it through the, <laughs> through the drapes yeah, and through like a the, tree. The, yeah. The blinds <laughs> are not fully open now. Yeah. There, so. It's yeah. a little okay. two door. It's a little uh-huh. two door. Oh, maybe it's, that's what it was. Uh, yeah. It, it is a two door. It is Unlike all the vehicles that Lisa drives and has competed in, it is bone stock. It is, oh, I don't wow. even have the, the Sasquatch package. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, it's a black diamond. It's a 2021. And yeah, there's the only mods are lights. Wow. <laughs> nice. And a sweet roof rack. And a sweet roof rack from Prince Yeah. Nice. And um, we did, we are very fortunate. Like you mentioned the cost, you know, we, we have an amazing partner, Firestone Tires that, that you know, they're oh, cool. back with us again this year. And, um, yeah, uh, we did have some mechanical issues during, uh, the first time I competed last year, mm-hmm. but you know, none of them were tires and that tires are like the number one failure yeah. people experience. on the uh. So we were really grateful to have, um, you know, that fresh rubber that, you know, took care of that us. You the can whole depend on. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah. What were some of the mechanical issues you had last year? So it wasn't. Lisa's, Lisa's laughing. laughing. Lisa's laughing at her. <laughs> it's a good story. <laughs> so I had trained, I did most of, our, we had done most of our training in the Glamis Sand Dunes because that's sort of like the hardest environment. And if you can drive there, you, you know, they sort of give you the impression you can drive anywhere. Right. Mm-hmm. Sure. And um, so we had trained there a lot. So I was like looking forward to that last base camp. Cause I'm like, we're going to get they They always say on the live show, you, you can watch the rally, you know, there's live coverage every single day. They always say everything changes at Glamis. And we were like, you know, we had some, we did really well the first day and we had some setbacks, you know, throughout the competition, but I, it was like, yeah, that last day, like we're going to be where we, you know, in our home turf, it felt like, because we had trained there so okay. much. And uh, so there's some girls that they have never driven in the sand dunes when they show up at Glamis. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I would die. Like it's, an, it's, an, it's unbelievable to me. Yeah. Those massive dunes are extremely yeah. intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> Before I did the rebel, that was the one requirement that Anna had of me. She's like, we have to go to Glamis. Yeah. You have to see the dunes before the rally because otherwise you're going to be way too intimidated. Yeah, absolutely. It's like absolutely. deal. Yeah. <laughs> Does the rally essentially end in Glamis every year? Or? We it don't has actually pass. Yeah. It, okay. It, yeah. Every single other year, the last day has been in Glamis this year. It, we all the, the only information we have about the last base camp is that it's near Joshua Tree and Lucerne Valley. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, because the gala in all years past have been in San Diego, right? Well, San Diego or Glamis. Or Glamis. Okay. In so Glamis. in COVID, they so, yeah. moved it out to so just, sure. just have the big tent in the wash and have mm-hmm. the party there. Yeah, 
Yeah. It's always been deep in Southern California. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Almost yeah. to Mexico. Yeah. yeah. So I had this like high expectation and we had a late start time because they sort of assign your start time by how well you do. And we had kind of like fallen off a little bit of our performance. So we were out a little bit later, which meant this, it was a little bit hotter. And then at the, like in that afternoon, like two or three, you know, the dunes are really, really hard to read. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I'm like, let's get this blue and then let's like boogie back to base camp. Like it was a really hard day. It was a really challenging competition. I thought we were going to run out of fuel and, um, I'm out there and this dune lied to me. And, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened? And I, I thought it was a real easy transition. I'm just going to hop up and hop over. And like, there was our blue is going to be right over that hill. And it was not, I slammed directly into that dune. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And you catch air and like, no, nose dive. No, it was uh, but you like, just weren't able just to continue hit a up. wall. Just, yeah. hit a wall. <laughs> just like this, yeah, like a 90 degree <laughs> angle. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that sand is soft, but not soft enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so I lost four wheel drive. We had to call for on course recovery. It was and you're like, you're there. It's a 120 degrees, like no exaggeration. Oh, yeah. And we're just sitting there in the car and I'm like, do we have to turn the AC off? It, you know, <laughs> we're waiting for people to come. Like we can't, we'll die. We're like chugging electrolytes. And <laughs> finally, like we call and they come and get us and like pull us out. And Jimmy Lewis, the course director, he's like, have you been, have you driven in the sand? I'm like, yeah, a lot. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is not supposed to be a problem. Cause I only had two wheel drive. He's like, if you go, you know, here, here. And I'm like, yeah, I see the route. I can go, if I go like this, 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 I can get up to sand highway. And I'm like, can we get any other checkpoints? He's like, there's one more green, go get the other green and go back to base. I'm like, okay. So I drove out of the dunes and then up and around to base camp on two wheel drive. Uh, we saw our friends at the last green and they had just come out of these like silty because it was that's the other thing. The weather was so crazy that winter of 21 to tw or 22 to 23. Mm -hmm. The course was just insane Yeah, because there's so much damage. So there's just silt everywhere. And so they followed us back to the checkpoint, laid down max tracks so we could get back out <laughs> and like barely cross the finish line. There's this like <laughs> as I'm driving, there's this like crazy knocking noise. <laughs> Oh no. Uh, from the car. <laughs> yes. From the car. So we're there We're I'm like thinking I'm going to run out of fuel in the, in this line to cross the finish line. And everybody's like celebrating and happy because they're crossing the finish line and they did it. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm like ruining my car by like continuing to drive it. Finally, like we get, like my navigator runs out, she goes to the mechanics, asks, like tells them what's going on. They're like, cross the finish line. So you don't get a penalty and then come around to see us. And we, Luckily, uh, the rally mechanic, Nick is also in Northern California mm -hmm. and he, he's like, take, he's, he figured out, he's like, you can't drive at home. I'm like, yeah, no way. <laughs> 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 but, and this is not a thing that you can count on, but my vehicle is small enough and light enough that we emptied everything out and he put it in the trailer and brought it back up North for us, took it to the dealership for me and they repaired it under warranty. They had to replace the front diff and the right front hub. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot, but it was repaired under warranty. But, yeah. you know, you're like so stressed out. Like the only thing I didn't want to do was to break my car. Yeah. Like, I, that's the only thing I wanted. I mean, I mean, I wanted a lot of things. But like avoid. That was one yeah. of the big things that I really wanted is to not break the truck. And I broke the truck. And it was your ride home. And it was our <laughs> ride home. So we're like. So instead of like celebrating, I'm like trying to problem solve how we can get back to Northern yeah. California. Yeah. And like we ended up renting a, a, a Nissan Altima. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and it was like such a letdown, like no triumphant return. Like yeah. I had to drive back in a Nissan Altima. <laughs> Oh uh, man, that's a great story. Could you even put a rebel sticker on it? Oh maybe my gosh. just to get, you know, yeah, maybe some well, satisfaction. Then, you know, you kind of see people like that are also leaving the area and I kept like honking and like trying to wave at them. Like they have no idea who uh, I am. Yeah, like, <laughs> no clue. Yeah, yeah. You're invisible in that little commuter. Yeah. They're like, they're driving along. Oh, somebody likes my car. Yeah. My truck, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, having that failure, it was like, I, I have to go back. I know I can do better. I know the truck can do better. There's so many things, that, so many things you learn just from doing it mm -hmm. that you're, there's really like a leap in, uh, in knowledge and experience and, you know, all of confidence. that, that you and confidence mm -hmm. exactly yeah. that you get from like 
Well, we'll see. Cause I haven't gone back yet for the second year, <laughs> but like what, it feels that way now. Like we I feel like we're a lot we, more prepared definitely than I was before the rookie year. Cause there's, it's just, there's well, a lot. You know what you're getting yourself into. Like you, yeah. you have an understanding of it when you watch it or you see it on TV, but when you experience it, mm-hmm. you know, you get a better understanding of what you're going to put yourself into. And now that you're going back for the second year, both of you for a second year, you know, you, you know, you have a better understanding. You know what you need to be doing. You know, like I need to stay up a little later to look at the map or I, mm-hmm. you know, I need to make check X, Y, and Z on the rig and make sure it's all good before mm-hmm. I go off on these, you know, it's like just the experience of having done it once it prepares you for the second time. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And it helps you cut down your packing list too. <laughs> yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, how did you two meet each other and get, you're, and then just be like, Hey, let's go do the rebel rally in 2024. So my partner in 23 cannot learn by watching videos. Ah. She, she's, she's like an experiential I, learner. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. So I'm like, there's some, I know there's at least five, five or six rebels that are near in the, near us in the Bay area. Like, let me have a meetup and we can just do, at least learn the basics before we training? go. To- what do you mean? There's rebels. Like player, uh, and the players, contestants, competitors. Oh. Comp- competitors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Better, <laughs> people that had competed before <laughs> and it. like that, that we could, you know, vampire vampirically steal their knowledge yeah. <laughs> from them. Yeah, Just suck their blood. Got exactly, it. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween's nearby. We can. Yeah. <laughs> so I started having these meetups with local rebels, and I'm like, you know, the the whole community is very supportive, but we're kind of all spread out. You know, there's there's even international competitors, as Lisa mentioned. So. Mm. I'm like, let's tap our resources that are local to us. They're all very generous with their time and their knowledge. Like let's have, uh, let's have some meetups so we can like learn all these stuff, but also have some friendly faces when we do get to the rally. Yeah. So we started hosting those and put, there's a unofficial rebel prepping page that has, you know, it, anyone can join if you're interested in competing and you can search the whole history and see everything everybody's freaked out about ever. And, um, <laughs> And Lisa showed up to one of the first ones. I, we, I think we had like four or five last year. Yeah, it was in November, like mm-hmm. right after I had competed. Mm-hmm. And so everything was fresh. And I was like, oh, I can go help these rookies who I just, you know, finished my rookie year. And you guys were looking for information and wanting to learn. And it was about 45 minutes from my house. So yep. I was like, sure, I'll go. She said she's putting out snacks. Yeah. So. <laughs> Lured them in with snacks and drinks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So yeah, we looked at some maps. We learned the basics of like plotting, which I had sort of already known, but I was not good at it. Like I'm, I'm still not great at the nav part. Like that is something that was my goal this year to like consciously get better at. And I have, but there's, you know, definitely room for improvement, but yeah, I met Lisa there. And, um, after last year, my partner, she didn't want to do two years in a row and it is a big financial commitment. But I knew I wanted to do it again. And I knew Lisa already. I knew she was, you know, very um, competitive and also (laughs) like knowledgeable. Uh Like she was helping a lot of rookies and I was at her house one day. She's helping our friend Kelly um, and her husband, Lisa's husband, Nick and Lisa both helped Kelly a ton with her truck. I knew that she had a lot of knowledge about the vehicle. And even though I'm the driver, I don't know everything about the Bronco but Lisa just has been doing it for so long and has built so many rigs. Like she has such a depth of knowledge that I don't have. I'm like, Mm -hmm. that that's a real asset. Mm -hmm. And I know she's like her and her and Anna had trained cross trained in her year to, you know, they were going to switch. So she had already done a lot of like the navigation backups. And, and then we all got together. When was that January or February of this year? And I thought you were going to go for competing in 24 and you said, no, 25. And then you mentioned, yeah, I'm going to train on the nav because I might have to be a navigator the next time I go. And I was like, ding. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of people want to drive the rebel. It's the navigators that are hard to find. The navigators are very hard to find. Yeah. And that's where like the, the real intricacies of the competition are and like how you play the game is how you nav. That's how you get points is navigating. Like uh, um, the driving is really, I mean, it's not like that it isn't challenging. There's definitely moments, but the the points are, are definitely in the the accuracy of the navigation. Yeah. 
Um, so I, we were invited by, there's, um, there are two teams that we've trained a bunch with this year. One is the oldest competitor, uh, ever. She's going to be 78 when she, com- when she competes in wow. October, like she's there. She's amazing. I can never say I'm tired around her. Cause I'm like, <laughs> she's out here. She's got many years on me and she's killing it. Mm-hmm. The, they're the badass grandmas the bags. <laughs> and there's another team we competed with. Uh, we, uh, trained with a bunch of grit and grace and they're from the South. Um, they're very sweet. They're and awesome. They're rookies this and year. they're rookies this year and they're killing it. But the, back in, I think it was April. Yeah. They planned a training trip uh, to Ridgecrest, which is an area the, the rally goes back to often. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to go, but my I knew my partner didn't want to compete this year and she wasn't necessarily going to train with me if we didn't have a rally coming right up. So mm-hmm. I texted Lisa and I said, Hey, Danielle can't make it. Do you want to come and be my navigator? And she's like, Hold on, let me get childcare, and then right away I was like, "Yes, I'm going." <laughs> yeah, I was in. Just had to make sure the babies were taken care of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, and then little did I know that um, <laughs> that was my audition <laughs> um, <laughs> for the wrong seat uh-huh. for this year's rally. <laughs> By the end of that training, I had kind of picked up on it, and I flat out asked her because yeah. she was like, "Oh, so what are you doing this October?" <laughs> Who usually watches your kids yeah <laughs> how did you do that is is nick okay with uh maybe washing your kids every thursday friday so we can go train <laughs> nice yeah he would, he would say yes oh yeah, yeah. yeah. nick has been yeah. hugely hugely supportive i mean sure. he's really like when you have a family on the route like i don't but uh lisa does obviously and um you got to have huge support from from home and from family it, to, to get this kind of thing done you have yeah. to put the time in um, yeah. So yeah, really, like they say in the rally, like your third teammate is the Bronco and our fourth teammate is definitely Nick. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> yeah, he's been very yeah. supportive. For sure. And um, yeah, and the only reason I can really do all this. Absolutely. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was just going to say, so this episode's coming out on Monday. You guys mm-hmm. leave Tuesday or Wednesday? Oh, Wednesday, morning. Wednesday morning. Early. Wednesday morning. Early. All you know is you're headed out to, to Mammoth Lakes area. <laughs> We At have, this point in time, right? We have a hotel for the night of the ninth. Yeah. And then after that, we don't know where we're going. <laughs> and, and we're going to camp. And we'll be camping. Yeah. And for like camping. 10 nights. Yeah. And At your least. phones are locked up. Your mm-hmm. communications locked up. Mm-hmm. You're only on maps and gasoline yeah. anywhere you go. <laughs> yeah. So the ninth <laughs> is like pre-tech and welcome in Mammoth. And that's actually open to the public this year. Yeah, that's very oh, cool. Which is yeah. That's unique. pretty cool, yeah. Yeah. And then the morning of the 10th, we go through the official tech inspection. And then we transit to our first base camp, which mm-hmm. we will find out that morning. Yes. And then we have like a welcome dinner. And then the next day is our prologue. So we'll have rally school in the morning. And then typically, I say typically because, you know, it could change. You, never change. Know. you don't know. You have <laughs> no information yeah. at this point. Yeah. It's still a secret. Um, yeah. yeah. So we have rally school in the morning typically and then uh, prologue later in the day just to make Which sure. Which is unscored, you, but you're out in the field and doing all the things. Yeah. Make sure you. They're testing you to make sure. Yeah. To see yeah, yeah you know how to on. click yeah. the tracker <laughs> and you wait a second till, you know, it talks to the sky and then you move on. Okay. And yeah, just make sure everything's working and it's our last opportunity to work out any kinks or try something new mm-hmm. and then before scoring and then um the next day but that would be the day one yeah i don't know i don't know On what friday. day it is yeah friday friday friday's day one friday's mm-hmm. day and then one. it's how long is the competition typically it's it's seven, seven scored days seven so that scored first days. unscored day doesn't so you know friday to friday yeah yeah yeah, yeah. wow wow it's a lot. It's a, it's, <laughs> it's an endurance thing. And it's, yeah. so it's like, I mean, the thing about the rebel, it's like, it's not just the driving. It's not just the day of wheel. It's not just a day of wheeling. It's right. not just like getting it's up not early. Weekend. It's yeah. It's not short. Yeah. They designed it that way intentionally that you have really have to commit to this, you know, insane eight day thing. Yeah. How does, how does food and, and supplies work? Are you going to at each checkpoint at the end of the day? Is there 
food available? Do you have people? Is Nick doing food drops for you? Like, what's, <laughs> what? yeah, or are you responsible well, so for it on all the rebel? On your own? Is yeah. a closed course. Well, like closed in terms of like there's no spectators. Yeah, of course it's on public lands, and so you know we could run across people that are out there, but we're not allowed to talk to anybody. Mm-hmm. That's You're outside of yeah, the... there there are rocks out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but if we if we try to talk to people that are outside of staff or you competitors, could be, be disqualified. we yeah. could be disqualified. Wow. Yeah. So it's a big deal. So So you can't ask them for directions. Right. And you can't yeah. have anybody <laughs> following you. Please don't try to meet up with yes, us. Yes, please uh-huh. do not. Like you can see where we are in real time. Like we do not want to see you until we have to recross the finish yeah. line. But to answer the food question, yeah, the the base camps are all supported camping. So okay. we're there in our tents, but there's like a big tent with like a, basically a mobile kitchen. Okay. And they have breakfast and dinner for us every day. We're at base camp. And then they have snacks to grab for lunch. And um, the chef is Drew Deckman. And he's a Michelin star chef. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, yeah, like it's it's not it's not all luxury, but like you have that one thing that's nice that like you can count on. You don't have to like cook for yourself, yeah. except on marathon nights when you're self camping, you, you do have to. Well, that was uh, my question. You're trying to pack everything for a week for two people in a two door Bronco. Yes. On, yeah. this, on this. And you're, you're packing for uh, an a rally. So you, you need tools, you need supplies, yep. you yep. need yes. tents, you need all your camping gear. And I'm like, you got, you got food in there too. Uh, but uh, I mean okay. a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Clothes for all weather <laughs> sandstorms, you know, uh-huh. last year it was freezing cold. It was uh-huh. below freezing and then at the first base camp. It was horrible. We're going to be in dunes in Southern California. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, the temperature swing it's last year from day one to day seven was a hundred degrees. Dang. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. So yeah. <laughs> so you do have to be prepared, but I mean, and we have of course like our favorite snacks. We have to carry water for safety. We have to carry a few other like safety items. We mm-hmm. have recovery gear, of course, tools, all the things you mentioned, mm-hmm. tents, sleeping bags, you know, all those things. But uh, the food part is is pretty taken care of. Except um, for marathon. Except and for marathon. Year- the they, same as last year, there are two marathons. Right. Okay. So um, they do tell you how many marathon yes. days they're going to be yes. so you can prep for it. Yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What are some of the the gear that you guys are planning on taking? Like what are, do you guys have anything that you are, are there necessities? Like the, is there a list of things that you, they say you have to bring yeah. compared there, to what else are you going to bring? For sure. There's required items like a spill kit, first aid kit. Mm-hmm. What else is required? Water, water, mm-hmm. yeah, stuff like like common like, sensey stuff. Oh, road flare, road, like well, not, not flares, flares but the but triangle, reflective triangles, yeah, night, night visible night. devices. Um, and then they tell you some things that are suggested. And then uh, Nina Barlow from Barlow Adventures, mm-hmm. who's won the Rebel several times, um, she shares her packing list. But you know, very very generously uh, shares her packing list that gives you kind of a jumping off point. And there's stuff on there like. There's stuff on her list and I'm like, I don't know how to use that. I'm not going to get that deep into it, but if it's something small, I'll throw it in, you yeah. know, cause maybe someone else knows how to use it, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. You have to sort of use your own common sense. It's a, it's a, it's a endurance rally, but it's also a self-reliance rally. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's also vehicle specific. Like what is mm-hmm. your vehicle need? Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. know, there's things that I would take for an older vehicle that I wouldn't take for a new Bronco. Right. Yeah. But we do like the only spare part we're really carrying of significance are tie rods because that's the, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Bronco yeah. Uh, yeah. and, and mechanics, independent. Yeah. The mechanics don't carry spare parts for you. They don't carry fluids for you. Like you need to right, bring we your have own. Fluids, yeah. You can like pay for spare parts bin mm-hmm. um, that the rally will carry around for you. Um, okay. We're choosing not to do that. We don't think we need that many spare parts. I mean, and the we thing think we can I, fit it yeah. in that tiny Bronco. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the thing I broke last year is not a thing I could have carried with me. So yeah, it's yeah. like... <laughs> I was going to ask how big has that been? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Just put, <laughs> yeah. put another Bronco in there. Just. Yeah, there are specifications to how big it can be. For sure, for yeah. sure. I mean, the mechanics really are incredible. I think then when you fuel pump, you had your fuel pump issues, someone yes. drove a fuel pump up. Wait, you were in Ridgecrest and they drove to the yeah. all night ga- uh, auto zone in Las yeah. Vegas, got a fuel pump oh and drove back. Well, actually wow. there was, they had a friend, I think his name 
was Sean Jorgensen, who was also an FJ Cruiser owner and a friend of Michael Schaefer and Anna Lewis. And Michael Schaefer is one of the mechanics. And he's the one that drove out all night. And Sean picked up a fuel pump from the 24 hour parts store in Vegas Mm -hmm. and drove it out (laughs) halfway to meet him. And that's the only way we made it to the start line the next day on time. Incredible. Yeah. The fuel pump was put in and they wrapped it all up by 4 a.m. Wow. The cowbell rings at five. Jeez. <laughs> and yeah, and then but the yeah, start those, line starts at seven. Wow. Those mechanics, like they, they, that's their reason for being there. Like they want to make this happen for everybody. It's really, they're a really amazing team. Like I think my year, and Lisa almost jumped on this. Nick just posts like, Hey, there's an axle in my shop. Who can drive it down from Georgetown to, I think it was Ridgecrest again. Mm-hmm. And, uh, one of his friends jumped on it. Um, wow. But I was like, I have to go to this meeting it's after <laughs> he still needs somebody. I feel like I need to pay it forward. I could just mm-hmm. hop in the car and drive down there. <laughs> and like, yeah, one of his, exactly like one of his friends just like went, picked up the axle, drove it all the way to Ridgecrest and they were on. Scene. Wow. Like, yeah. Jeez. That's crazy. What is some of the uh, trainings? Cause you keep mentioning that you you've done trainings, you're doing trainings, you did this and that. What are, what are some of the trainings that you've done you've been working on in order to prepare for the rally this year? So we've mostly met up with other rebel teams and planned a lot of our own trainings. We've done a lot of paid trainings um, hosted by um, the rebel. They have a whole program called rebel U where if you want to learn how to navigate, learn how to drive off road, Mm -hmm. um, they'll take you out in a safe space, teach you how to do that. They also this year came out with rebel trials, Mm -hmm. which is kind of like a mock rally. So they take you through kind of like a mock day. Mm -hmm. um, So you have the track, you have a better, you know, the whole, yeah. Okay. They have little marked checkpoints, some marked, some unmarked. (laughs) Yeah. So they have all that for you to kind of try it out and see. Lonnie and I have already done a lot of those trainings. And so we kind of wanted to apply more, like get to know each other better, our communication styles, Mm -hmm. what worked, what didn't work. We've spent a lot of days together in the vehicle. I think it's up to over 21 days Mm -hmm. together in the vehicle, just solid, solid days. So we didn't get sick of each other yet. No, not yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. our communication has greatly improved. Uh-huh. It was, <laughs> was it was it not so great to begin with? I mean, you know, it's just when like, you say like, oh, around that corner, then there's that rock. What what rock are we talking about? You know, exactly. uh, like okay. you just have to figure out your method of how you're describing things, what the other person understands, and then how we're going to talk to each other and communicate between Mm -hmm. our different roles. Mm -hmm. Like I was a driver primarily previously, and she was a driver too. And you know, what she wants to hear isn't what I wanted to hear. So (laughs) I'm like, Oh, I'm not talking to myself. Uh (laughs) Yeah. And then I'm doing things a little bit differently than her previous navigator did. So Mm -hmm. it's just getting, getting to know each other, getting that communication down and then, and then also Mm -hmm. trying to go through all those little mistakes and trying to eliminate them. Like this is going to be my first year being a full navigator. And so I feel like a little bit of a rookie coming into it, but some of the silly mistakes I've gotten out of the way and I've come up with processes to eliminate them. Like Mm -hmm. one of the first trainings we were switching (laughs) between maps and the different maps have different scales and we have these little rulers that are set to each scale and I was using the wrong ruler on the wrong map. And I was <laughs> like, how come we're not seeing this yet? It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh this big rock formation is uh, 50 meters away and not a hundred meters away. Yeah. What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> so just kind of working all those little kinks out. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can only do that with time, you know, yeah, like time and experience. Yeah and, yeah. and the same with the driving, you know, it's all seat time mm-hmm. Same with the navigator role. It's seat time. And, mm-hmm. and the hardest part, like, we can practice plotting. We can practice all these things to get ready, but really it's the route planning, mm-hmm. the route planning and the feature identifying and the time management and the time management. Mm. Yeah. That yeah. are the big keys and those you can only really learn out in the field. So we've prioritized going to different areas 
as many different areas as we can to kind of gain that knowledge. Mm-hmm. And then do you also kind of set up your own routes then, and then try and do them out in these yes. different areas or, okay. Yeah. What do you do? Get a map and throw a dart at it. And you're yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, you're those are five holes are where we're going to try to hit today. Well, there's strategic areas. Like there's only so much public land, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and there's only so much land that, um, you know, is open to be able to do mm-hmm. the rebel on. So we try to strategically go to places that the rebel has historically been, you know, to see if, you know, maybe we'll go back there this year. An advantage of being a veteran is that you've been to most of the areas that the rebel will be in. So you're familiar with the terrain. Yeah. You remember the good road and the bad one. And <laughs> they might yeah. be right next to each other and you don't want to end up on the wrong one and have it be a time suck or have to turn around. Yeah. And the thing with the maps is that, not everything is on there that's in real life and vice yeah. versa. Some things could be on there that are no longer there because of weather changes. and mm-hmm. Or and those- because Emily just took them off. The- uh, <laughs> do they give so you they, the they maps? supply you the maps for they the supply event? The maps, yeah. yeah. So Interesting. You, you can't bring your own. Like Absolutely if you went to not, an area, no. you can't mark down like Mm-mm. bump in the road here or this, you're, this don't go on this one. Follow this one. No, no. You're yeah. Interesting. the smallest scale map you're allowed to bring is 500,000 which is way useless. I don't yeah. know what that means. Yeah, I don't know what that means either. <laughs> 500, that 500. Uh, the biggest map that we've been given in the rally is a 200,000 scale. And everybody complains about navigating off a 200,000 scale because it's so hard to see all these tiny little roads and there's so many features and so many things. And Cause it's like way, way zoomed out. Yeah. Like what would a, a yeah. map of California be? What? Oh, r- of something. the entire the state. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying sure. to, I don't know yeah. what a 2000 scale of 5,000 scale I is. some for you to see, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, how can we relate that to like what something is, that the, yeah, what does that mean? 200,000 scale? So it's, it's would like, it be like a map more, of like, like, you know, when you zoom in on something on your computer, yeah. like, you know, plus, plus, plus for those of us that are old with bad eyes, like you need to Zoom in, zoom in. Sure. That would be the smaller scale. So is it? So a, a, a 200,000 scale would be zoomed way, way, way out. So for example, like Glamis, mm-hmm. we usually like working on a 50,000 scale map. Mm-hmm. Um, and that covers the entirety of Glamis. And it's like one of Got the it. largest dune structures. And so that would be one of the smallest maps, scale mm-hmm. maps that we would receive. And then, you know, magnify that, you sure. know, to 200,000 and... So there's like a lot more margin of error because if you're yeah. off by like one little tick mark in real life, that's, you know, whereas on a 50,000 scale map, that little bit might be a hundred meters on a 200 scale map. If you're off by like that couple of millimeters, it's yeah, you know, maybe like, yeah, exactly. A it's a lot further. So it's like, gotcha. Yeah. So is it, is it 200, it's not 200,000 miles it's one so to like 200,000. So there, we have these scale rulers that are, that you, they're, they match up usually to the scale of the map. Yeah. <laughs> There's times when they don't perfectly match up, uh-huh. but that helps you sort of like the, use that ruler to find your distance and your, um, where your plot should be based on right. you know, okay. the, the numbers and the lines. On the so map. then there's that okay. for Lisa, I guess there's points that when you're flipping between like a 200, thousand scale map Mm -hmm. to like a hundred thousand scale map to possibly a Mm -hmm. 50,000 or scale map. And you have to know where you were on the previous map and carry it over to where you are on the new map. Yes. And then all of the points that you're trying to get to all the checkpoints ideally would be on all the maps. So it's not just plotting them once it's plotting them for every map that you have. (laughs) That happens to cover that area. That, yeah. that covers that area. And sometimes, you know, I, I've i been plotting, you know, in the mornings trying to get all my systems worked out. And I was replotting a lot of 22. And this one day we had six maps. Oh, my God. So you have to <laughs> transfer so, all this data between the six different maps. Yeah. I mean, not okay. not all of it because it would move through. That was a really big they're called transit days where we cover mm-hmm. a lot of distance um, to go from one area to another area. So. It was a lot of flipping between multiple 200,000 scale maps, multiple 100,000 scales and scale maps. So okay. it was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and so they just give you the GPS coordinates of where the point is, and then you have to put that on the map. Correct. Yes. And they can deliver that in a variety of ways. So that's also um, <laughs> mm-hmm. another skill. 
to learn is, um, you know, in what form are they going to give you the GPS coordinate? There's three gotcha. different forms of yeah. coordinates, or yeah. you could get a heading and a distance from a known point and you would have to figure out how to get there from that. So that you okay. might not even get a coordinate and that way when you click your tracker and you get a coordinate, you're like, well, what was that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> now you can plot it on your map and figure out where you are, but it all takes time and your biggest enemy is time. So time from, mm -hmm. from one point you might get the, the next location might be like 50 miles, let's just say kilometers, in, no, or kilometers. <laughs> 50 kilometers <laughs> Northeast. Is They'll that give what us you mean? A, yeah. An actual heading, a degree. A yeah. degree. Yeah. Oh, a yeah. degree. And so we have a tool that's called a plotter when you dial it to that degree and lay it on the map. Yeah. And if, but if that first plot is off, then, yeah. you're you're, you're, then your next, your next plot is going to be off too. Dang. Okay. Yeah. Or if your plotter is off slightly and you're going over a very long distance, mm -hmm. your error just compounds. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. <laughs> wow. Tricky stuff. Fun times. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That puts another twist on it. I was thinking they would give you the actual like coordinates of your next spot you have to go to and you just translate that. But if they're giving you the coordinates of the spot and then you have to translate it based on where you are currently mm -hmm. and they're, that's your reference point that mm -hmm. they're giving you, that could be all sorts of There's interesting, can get bad very quickly. Many, many opportunities to prepare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then there's different, yeah. So like I said, there's different ways to express the coordinate. So mm -hmm. there's um, degree and then decimal minutes, mm -hmm. or there's degree minutes seconds, or there's even just decimal degrees. Yeah. So there's three different ways to mm -hmm. express a coordinate and you have to figure out either math it or you, we, some of our rulers that we purchase um, to use on the rally have different sides that have different okay. expressions on them, okay. but then you have to remember to use the correct yeah, side. Flip them around. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, when you're up at five in the morning plotting these, it you know, can get a little squirrely. If you don't notice that it's in a different expression yeah. and you go ahead and plot what you think it says instead of what it actually says, it's another opportunity to yeah. get yourself in trouble. Yeah. Right. And then all your points get compounded <laughs> errors throughout the day. So uh, yeah. Geez. Or you miss, you know, you might miss a green, you might mm -hmm. miss, you know, miss out on the points and it's about, it's about gathering all those points. It's a, you know, it's a scavenger hunt basically. Yeah. Is that something you guys are going to wake up together and do at the same time? Or is it just Lisa's job? So Lisa's going to do most of the plotting. I get the fun job of doing the other components to the competition aside from finding checkpoints is we have these rebel enduro challenges or RECs and these are roadbook challenges. What, what, or what's a roadbook <laughs> challenge? Yeah. I haven't heard of these yet. So <laughs> well, yeah, this is like half of the competition. Is, really? It's about 50% of the points mm -hmm. I believe in, in previous years. It's a lot of points. <laughs> it's, it's definitely a lot of points. I mean, in my rookie year, I was, I was asking veterans like, can I just skip these? Cause this is awful. And they're like, no, you can't skip them. You have to do it. <laughs> so there's three different <laughs> kinds of enduros. Right. There are time speed distance enduros where you have to be at a certain place at a certain time and you are given a road book which has two lips which tell you the distance to that point from your start um a tiny little picture like a little pictograph okay. telling you what to do there okay. and then any any other information that you need to know whether you're changing speeds or or anything like that okay so oh, you're given it. this book and then you have to come up with what time do I need to get there and for the on time ones typically you need to be at that location within three seconds Holy crap. of a time to get <laughs> points full points so yeah so I'm and that's doing average this math, speed right. so if you start from a stop you got to make up that speed or if you, there's a washout you yeah. have to make up that speed if you're going through a really turny you know, section that's sandy, you're going to have to make up that speed. Mm -hmm. If there's then, local, like by, innocent bystanders or bogeys on the trail, yeah. you got to, yeah, that's so on you. rocks you hit. Uh, it's on yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So every single one of these waypoints, you have to be there at the exact second that you're supposed to be. Jeez. And it's up to you to figure out when that is. So you have to do math in the morning. So she's the lucky <laughs> one that gets to do this math in the morning. And then there's two other types of enduros. One is um, an on route enduro. And that is usually used for transits through like sensitive areas 
or places where they really don't want you to go off route. You know, sometimes we have to drive by like military zones. Yeah. Um, so or they really don't really want you yeah, yeah. to or get borough rescues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> And then there's also precision enduros where they will challenge your navigational skills and there will be like eight different arrows coming off of this one little direction and you have to pick the right one. And then you look at it, you know, in real life and you're like, oh, my goodness. Which one is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And sometimes you're given headings on them and sometimes you're not. So it's it's a real challenge. How would you yeah. decipher that? Yeah. It's a like great how- question. Do you, yeah. do you look at them and then compare to what your plots are for the day on the, on your stuff or? So the Enduros, you don't use your maps. You use okay. just the papers you the that book. you're given. That's called a road book. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. And this is the road book that you pulled out for us to look at. Yeah. yeah. This is, for um, this is from years. day one of last year. Yeah. So it's really for those that are listening, it's a, a step-by-step with turns and times. So it roughly says you start here at zero seconds, 31 seconds in, you're going to more or less that's make a left minutes. That's or di- minutes. Distance. This is the distance. Oh, so that's 0.31 kilometers. Point. Okay. So the, uh, the timing starts here and it's plus five minutes. So, right. so, in so two this is in 0.37 kilometers, kilometers there's going to be, you're going to keep going straight and there's this fence on the or flag. And you got to be there within flag. five minutes at uh, five minutes. Right. So Lisa's yeah. telling me, Jeez. so I do all this math and then Lisa's reading to me once, once we get to the start line, she's like, okay, your speed is 50. You're going 50 kilometers an hour kilometers yes. per hour. <laughs> Average to get there. <laughs> Average. You're, you're yeah. going yeah. 50. You're going 50. Okay. You need to be, uh, we're, we're going to see this little, whatever that is. I can't see it. It's a flag flag. <laughs> you're going to see this flag and we're going to make a left turn or whatever. Right. Not, or, she doesn't say or whatever. I don't <laughs> and then what's the next one down from that one? Is that 80 speed? 60? Um, the speed 60. changes to 60. So the speed. So yeah. So there's speed changes. Dang. Okay. Um, there's speed changes. There's distance changes and. And direction. And directions. Yeah. Or left, yeah. right, straight. Yeah. Wow. And, some and of all them these are... stupid little symbols mean something. <laughs> and sometimes those things are not there anymore when you get there. So you just kind of have to say, well, I'm pretty sure this is it. And you trust your odometer. <laughs> Dang. So you just go around picking up flags. I get it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So this is um, arguably one of the more stressful um, events in the rally. It was definitely my weak point. So we've been working really hard on this for this year because it is such a, a big component of the scores. How do you you practice for the road book? Cause like the, the road book is given to you by the mm-hmm. race or the, by the competition. So if you, how do you practice doing roadbook stuff? Do you just make your own? You can make your own for sure. But yeah. if you make your own, that kind of defeats the purpose of. No, no it because, you said, because basically what we're doing is we're both driving the car at the same time. Right. Uh huh. So you need to get that, that teamwork down that okay. like she says this, I do this. Okay. So it's not so much about dealing with what this, you know, if there's a surprise or something like that, it's like, how are we going to do this activity as one person? (laughs) Yeah. How are we going to communicate effectively? So the other person knows what we're talking about and Mm -hmm. what information does she need to hear for all these different directions. Um, and and so there is a website rally navigator, Navigator, um, where you can make your own road books and then you can go out and practice them. And now when you're practicing them in not a rally situation. Um, you know, there are a lot more variables. Like you can't exactly do it around town with traffic lights and vehicles and stuff like that. You're not going to be on your time. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So, um, that's, you know, another, another complex part of, um, practicing for these. But kind of on the same side is if you have a, a road book made kind of in a suburby area, the, it has random obstacles that will occur. So it'll, sure. it'll challenge you every single time you even do the same course, there'll be a different obstacle and you'll have to adjust, you have to adjust for it and yeah. you have to communicate it. Right. And so even though the path is the same, mm-hmm. it's a mm-hmm. timed game at mm-hmm. that point, yeah. right? Like you might already know where to drive, but you know, I don't know if Lisa's t- communicating with you like, Hey, we just passed this. We're a little slow or faster. Mm-hmm. You know, speed. so even yeah. if you're doing the same course, it's, it's, different because the 
time and the speed and the you know, communication is all going to be different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just have to be careful because if you put your speed too low, then you know, you're going to get in trouble. And if you put your speed too high, you're going to get in trouble trying to <laughs> yeah. catch up on yeah. time. Yeah, sure. So, you know, doing it in a, in a urban area is not recommended. Well, yeah. Uh, maybe on route, um, enduros that could be fine, mm -hmm. but for the on time ones, it's definitely find a, find a rural area, go out to public lands and practice that. Uh, but that needs reconnaissance too, usually. So yeah. 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 So it's a, it's a complex part of the rally and fun when it's over. But it's, in over the, it's over. Yeah. Well, and like, if you're in the if, car when we're doing them, it's like <laughs> silent except for mm -hmm. like what I'm telling her. And then, you know, if she needs a follow up, she'll ask me. What's um, my speed? What's my speed? What's my time? What's my, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when am I supposed to be there? How many <laughs> seconds are left? <laughs> so you're not arguing over right. the playlist of music oh. at that time. Oh, no. no music. No, <laughs> no music. No, no music ever. Um, yeah. But they can be pretty long too. They can be like up to an hour that you're doing that okay. or longer. Yeah. yeah. They're, that's yeah. They're intense. Yeah. Uh, but, and if you take, if you take a, a organized class, like with, Rebel You or Barlow Adventures, oftentimes they'll have one for you to practice and you'll okay. get to do it a few times and then you'll get to jump in the car with other like more experienced teams and, and see how, they, see do how they do it and like okay. try and pick up like all those little bits of information from people on yeah. how to make it just like 1% easier. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> wow. Well, cool. That's, it sounds uh, like a blast. It sounds like a challenge, really. Um, mm -hmm. I'm terrible at navigation. You can ask Jimmy. He's nodding <laughs> emphatically over here. Uh, Me if too. There's, if <laughs> there's no GPS in the vehicle going at some mm -hmm. point, Tyler would get lost. I, yeah, Even totally. going to the grocery store oh that's gosh. down the road. It's nice. true. <laughs> I, I did that yesterday, actually. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I did that yesterday going to AAA. So, the yeah, it, it sounds crazy. Honestly, I, I'm just like, that's, I mean, that alone, the road book where you have to be going through this enduro challenge and be within three seconds of your target. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's just no room for error at that point. And so, and that the, the point system, how do you uh, get the points efficiently and correctly? Mm -hmm. uh, and you're out there doing this for a complete week. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it's, it sounds like a blast. Yeah. And so, it's a big endurance competition, yeah. you know, like mm -hmm. veterans will tell you to take it easy. Try to run at 80%. Cause if you try to run at a hundred percent every single day, you know, something's going to come up and, and somewhere, you know, you're going to have a hard time. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's sustainable for a weekend, you know, it's, mm, sure. it's not sustainable for seven days to run like that. <laughs> and so the rally affectionately has a, well, maybe not so affectionately. There's a day three called Big, yeah called day three what that most teams hit and it's just when everything kind of like culminates <laughs> and things just aren't working and mm -hmm. you, you know it's what makes or breaks teams mm -hmm. those day threes yeah. <laughs> for wow. sure for sure so if you know if you see someone and they're having a hard time they might be like it's just day three or i had my day three on day four yeah, yeah. you know you'll hear that gotcha. yeah, i had mine on day five the yeah. first year yeah. yeah for sure for sure i had mine on day seven for sure yeah. <laughs> yeah. well cool there's uh obviously it takes a whole army to do this and mm -hmm. to do events like this um we've talked a little bit with rich klein um about some of the volunteer efforts that go behind the rebel rally. Mm -hmm. What are some of the army that goes to help you guys do the rally? We've already talked about Nick as your, your, For sure. your Our other person, teammate. your fourth yeah. teammate <laughs> and Firestone's on board. It sounds like again. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're an incredible partner. Excellent. Um, we're so grateful for their support. We're the first team rebel team they've ever sponsored. So oh, we feel oh, a lot cool. of like responsibility and definitely gratitude for sure. Yeah. Excellent. What are some of the other support? people support companies that, that really have stepped up to be able to help you guys do this? I, as far as people, for sure, the badass grandmas, they've helped us <laughs> the a bags. ton. They're so that. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Holly has answered every question we've ever asked her, you know, mm -hmm. never been any, uh, you know, anything back like, Oh, I don't share that information. I keep that for my team. Like she's mm -hmm. been super open you know, anything we can come up with. Emmy Hall is incredible, incredible resource. She actually let us crash at her house when we uh, trained in Johnson <laughs> Valley. Same thing. She'll answer any question. And, you know, during the rally, you're like cut off from your friends and family and your support system. I feel like I'm cheating because she's always there on the rally. And like, I have <laughs> yeah. that person that like was really happy to see me when I come in and can tell me how well I did or, you know, fluff me up if I <laughs> didn't do so well. Uh-huh. 
And then uh, Nina Barlow has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, we've taken several trainings with her and um, she's just hugely knowledgeable. And again, like shares a lot of information. And Nick Simarusti, um, Nick Guyver, he's the rally mechanic and he happens to live close up here and has been super generous with his time and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Do you have any people besides Nick? Yeah. And then, you know, Anna Lewis, my For first sure. partner, she taught me so much. She is like the fastest plotter. I am trying to get up <laughs> to her speed. <laughs> but, you know, she's wishing us well as well. Um, and I learned so much from her. And I couldn't do this without, you know, my family, who's going to be watching my two For children sure. for two weeks. <laughs> I couldn't um, do this without Lisa's family either. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then we have some really awesome companies that have um, stepped up to support us this year. Um, Prince Sue Designs has come out with a two-door Bronco roof rack, especially for us, that we are so oh, cool. excited so incredibly to run. Grateful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just I've got been... it installed like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We're so excited. Get some things out from, you know, inside the Bronco. Mm -hmm. For sure. Anything that doesn't need to be in the cargo yeah, area. For sure. <laughs> And I've always, I always wanted a Princey roof rack, but they didn't make one for the two door Bronco. And, uh, uh, Lisa happened to have a contact with the company and was like, would you like a roof rack? I'm like, yeah, I would. <laughs> 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 um, cause they're just so clean, such a nice design, such low profile. I've, I've always wanted one and it looks killer on the Bronco. It's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. So yeah, get out there and buy one. Yeah. And then we also have Goose Gear, which is a great company that come, came on board to help us with our organizational system. Mm -hmm. You did a seat delete and floor plate system. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. So just anything we can do to help that cargo management. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that was super, super helpful. Flying Eyes, they are primarily aviation glasses, but they're really for anybody that has to put on, you know, anything on their head. They're these really low profile, really flexible arm glasses so huh. because we have to wear helmets during the rally uh, we yeah. have they gave us sunglasses that will you know they they Works made, well onto the helmet exactly exactly gotcha. so they'll actually fit exactly yeah. so we're super super grateful for that what is that company flying eyes flying eyes yeah okay. they're they're super awesome they even do prescription glasses which i need lisa doesn't need them mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're awesome super awesome that's cool um, i know we have a a fair amount of ultra four racers that listen to the show as well mm -hmm. and so having that ability to wear sunglasses especially mm -hmm. in the bright afternoons or evenings when you're racing yeah. under a helmet mm -hmm. is a is a huge thing for a lot of the race teams out there, yeah, so. and then they even have like specific colors that are recommended for driving and yeah. stuff like that yeah. too, oh, cool. because you know that changes your vision. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Okay, cool. That's a good one. And then our amazing friends at Glue Tread—they're super cool. They yeah. give us whatever we need. We have a coupon code with them. You can see on our link tree. Cool. I was just talking um, with Andy this morning, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they supported us from the beginning. It's it's really awesome. Nice. Kula cloth. Gave us a bunch of Kula cloths for to give away as prizes. So if you give money to our our team and our uh, Give Butter fundraising, you'll mm. get a Kula cloth. It, it's a customized Dead Reckoning Kula cloth. What are Kula cloths for? <laughs> oh, for what ladies. Okay, got it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> they're nice. pea cloths. Okay, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they're they originated really with backpacking, mm -hmm. but they've really taken off in, you know, the off-road space because, you know, girls got to pee. Exactly. Yeah. We have, <laughs> we, we have a couple of episodes anywhere. all based around women peeing outdoors. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Reduce the white flowers, use a cooler yeah. cloth. Yeah, right. <laughs> for sure. And then, um, Baja well, design. I'm sorry. Do you, so do you wear that constantly or is it oh, something? It's a, just no. a little it's a square. Up. It's a pad yeah. and, and it's, it's a, no, or something. It's, it's like an antimicrobial, it's like fabric, that, fabric okay. that you use instead of toilet, toilet paper. paper. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And then it can hang and dry out. You can wash it. Um, and it's yeah, antimicrobial and, and if you so fall, really it's yeah. so you go to the bathroom, you just don't leave anything. Exactly. There. Correct. You take, you take the, the cooler cloth yeah, with, with you, you and you can clean it later or yeah. dry it out and yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank um, you for explaining that. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Um, and then Baja Designs gave us all those sweet, sweet lights on the Bronco that make it nice. look super cool. Um, we're really grateful for those. And then Bubba Rope for all those times when we need an extra, extra help getting out of what something we've gotten into. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are, those are all of our supporters this year. We're really grateful for everybody. Um, That's awesome. And then we also have some, you know, like um, independent supporters that oh, have given sure, to our sure. Give Better campaign. Mm -hmm. And, you know. What is the Give Better campaign? 
So we are paying for a lot of these costs out of our own pocket. And one of the costs, big costs that's coming up is our fuel. We have to pay for our own fuel on the rally and we don't get that total till the end. Right. Yeah. So, so there's still time, folks, if you want to buy us a tank of gas, <laughs> hop on that gift butter. Yeah. So while we're super grateful for the Rebel for providing, you know, fuel for us at every base camp and all along the way, mm -hmm. um, we will have to pay, to pay for, for that it, yeah. at the end. Yeah. So that's the last thing I think that we're so fundraising is, is for. Is Give Better a uh, website like GoFundMe? Or Correct. What? Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. One, yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. So you guys have a, a good, a Give Better give butter. site. Butter. Yeah. Butter? Butter, B-U-T-T-E-R. Give oh. us the butter. Give butter. Okay. <laughs> so you have a, a, a site for you guys' own stuff on givebutter.com? Yes. I think it's okay. givebutter.com. Well, it, everything is on our link tree. Gotcha. Okay. So if you go to linktree dot, uh, or linktree slash dead reckoning, you should get all of our links. You can get merch. You can get the Give Better site. You can read a little bit more about us on our team website. Okay. And we'll put that, yeah. since we have that, we'll put that down in the show notes. Jimmy's writing it down right now. So if you guys are curious about how to support these two ladies, uh, we'll have it down in the show notes for you guys. So. I thought the rig's name was Butter. Oh, that's all right. Like. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> like, <you> can... <laughs> the Bronco's name is Hank. Hank. <laughs> you got it. That's funny. <laughs> okay. Well, cool. Any Any other... Thank yous for people out there. I mean, I'm going to remember it as soon as I go yeah. get in my car to leave. But. I know, right? Yeah, it always <laughs> happens that way. But we are grateful to everybody who supported us along for the sure, way. All sure. the veteran rebels that we've learned from, you know, um, it's such a great community that when you're, you know, even in the rally, I had... I made it a point to sit at a different table with different people every single day at dinner. Oh, yeah. Well, the dinners that we weren't on marathon anyway, <laughs> and then get to know them all. And they're all just so generous with their information. They want to make sure you're doing well. And we definitely want to give that back this for year. Sure, for um, sure. Now that we're coming back for our, both of our sophomore years, mm -hmm. you know, um, in the rally and, and we're just excited for every and grateful to everybody who has done that for us along the way. Cool. Awesome. Uh, obviously, so the team's name is Dead Reckoning. That's right. And that can be found on Instagram. I assume Do you have other places that people could follow along and figure out what you guys are up to. Yeah. So our Instagram is at rally underscore team underscore 147. Okay. Yeah. So our team number is 147. That's how you'll be able to track us online. Okay. If you go to the rebel rally dot com slash live you should be able to find all the different ways to track us you can see our little tracker live during the day and you can follow us and watch us <laughs> just drive to all the checkpoints yeah that's yeah. all you have to do is drive that's to the what checkpoint. we're gonna do yeah. <laughs> that's our goal just drive to all the checkpoints it's so simple <laughs> exactly right <laughs> sounds simple so you yeah. can watch us um, or or scream at the computer as we're like a meter away from it, not clicking. Click, click, Also, oh, do they have the checkpoints mm -hmm. on the, the yes. live map? Yeah. So you oh, can see us. that's interesting twist and for the spectators. And how far away okay. we are from the checkpoints. That <laughs> well, drove my husband <laughs> crazy. Oh, yeah. There was one missing click. flag. Yeah. Um, was, and that we were circling for a while <laughs> in 22. And, but, and he was like, just click it. And... But in, yeah, in real life, no it wasn't there. there. There was a missing flag. Does it show where you guys are clicking to? It doesn't show where you click, okay. but it is also live scoring. So if yeah, you go to the scoring page and look at 147, we're going to be Trejo and DeLuca. And then you can see the scores populate as we click okay. and what we earned. So then you can kind of infer that would be if fun we were on the live map to see where the <laughs> checkpoints are, see where you guys are. And then you're like, you click over here and then you continue on. You could we. The spectators yeah. could view <laughs> mm -hmm. with everything where it's going on. I That's know fun. last year I was watching Lonnie <laughs> on the tracker and she kept going like back and forth, like back out to a road and then like going back towards a checkpoint. And I'm like, just click it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, she told me that later. I'm like, I know exactly what day that was. I know exactly what checkpoint that was. We were convinced it was on the other side of the road. And we kept looking, we were looking for a flat, like a little hidden pole. Uh -huh. There was a flag over there. Uh, and finally, and we were watching teams come through, click, move on, click, move on. We're like, those suckers, <laughs> they're going to get a penalty. <laughs> she was like, that's not our flag. <laughs> and finally, this other team with, 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 that was with us, you know, we all, we're at, this, at one time we had like four teams looking for this checkpoint. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we're just going to click. We're going to take the penalty. And we click. And it was the other one. It was uh, the one we watched everybody come and get. And we're like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah. And then they also have a live show. 
that mm-hmm. they put on. Hosted by Emmy Hall. Yeah, you can watch oh, cool. on Facebook yes. and YouTube. You can also find that on the website, the okay. links for that. They'll have morning and evening live shows every day and some midday live shows. Okay. So you'll be able to follow us there. Yeah, And they'll for give sure. you updates and on all that too. Okay. Yeah, and I know nice. last year, if you wrote some Facebook comments, some of those even popped up on the screen. So you can <laughs> give us a shout out if you want. Mm-hmm. Or, uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I mean, we won't get it till later. Yeah, you won't see it till <laughs> later at dinner. You know. But we'll feel it. You know, <laughs> yeah. we'll feel the good energy. <laughs> nice. Well, awesome. That's super cool. I'm glad that we got to have you two come down, spend a morning here, telling everybody about the Rebel, telling everybody about your experiences, how you got into it. It, what you're doing to prepare because it's on next week. Next you guys week, are, yeah. You guys are going out and you're going to be doing this. So. It's happening. <laughs> it's exciting. Do you feel like you're prepared and ready? I so think we're ready. I think there's ready. just a little few things that we would like to have done For that sure. we need to finish up, but they're not like needed. Okay. You know, you know it's still a huge rabbit hole. Yeah. You can just yeah. keep going. Right. <laughs> True. Yeah. Yeah. How, <laughs> how much ready. do you prepare? Yeah, yeah. Versus how much you really need to prepare. Yeah. I mean, I think we could leave tomorrow if we had to, but mm-hmm. we're definitely going to take pack my bag. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, what, we, my we'd in. have to go home and pack. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, we're ready. <laughs> Most of our stuff is packed. It's just, yeah. for me, it's just clothes. Left. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I have clothes and I have a couple of little other things I want to tie up, but yeah. Cool. Um, Well, awesome. Hopefully everybody follows along with you guys Mm -hmm. to kind of close out the episode. What's one piece of advice you would give to uh, a lady that wants to come on and become a navigator? And what's one piece of advice for somebody that wants to be a driver? Oh, no. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I would say be ready to let things go. You can't get in your head. So have a process for how you do that. I had to come up with one. That was one of Lonnie's feedbacks from my first training. And she's like, you are way too hard on yourself and you let it just eat at you. Yeah. And I was like, you know, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I have very high expectations of myself. I have to meet Yeah, those. and it's going to bother me all day. Yeah, but yeah. when you're hunting, you know, 20 plus checkpoints every day, yeah. you can't let one little road turn. Mm-hmm. eat at you. Yeah. So, so yeah, don't let the little mistakes eat at you. Everybody makes them. Everybody is going to make them. Mm-hmm. That is what some of the top teams even say is that, you know, we make mistakes too. Like that. Does anybody mm-hmm. ever have a perfect run every year? Never. No, no I was going to say, yeah. So Never. it's, yeah, it's, it, yeah. Imp- it sounds like it's set up to be impossible to have yeah. an imperfect run. So yeah. Now have people gotten every checkpoint? Yes, but not a perfect. I don't or know like, if people have gotten every checkpoint. I mean, they're, they're definitely high not 90%. Like 100%. Yeah. Not 100%. Not 100%. No. There have been 100% days. Oh, yeah. Maybe. But not for yeah. the whole rally. Yeah. Not for, for the sure. whole rally. Sure. Yeah. So mistakes are going to yeah. happen. You yeah. got to just, just accept it and move yeah, on. Yeah, accept it, figure out how to move on, throw yeah. it in the back seat, and move on to the next Yeah. The next thing, right? What's That's next? That's a really good one. Yeah. Good. Lonnie, what about you? <laughs> 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 I'm just sitting here listening to your amazing thought, and I don't know what to say. <laughs> You can build off that too, if that's part of your advice. I mean, yeah, like get out there, expose yourself to all the different types of terrain Mm -hmm. and, and, um, you know, don't be afraid to try new things. Listen to people who know more than you. (laughs) Yeah. That's another good one. (laughs) You know, get out, like you can't leave the ego at home kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I I trained a bunch with Nina Barlow and Nick Simarusi and uh, Paul Staple and uh, a couple other rebels, Mandy Brezina, Alex Gilman and um, uh, Peg Eaton. And um, you get out there with those people that know more than you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you're going to see some huge sand and attack it because, you know, that's, that's the most challenging thing they're going to see. And like, There are some people that are fine with this, but I knew I wouldn't be. Um, There's some people that they'll partner up with anybody and not spend a lot of time with them. Like there's some teams that meet at tech inspection. Wow. And to me, that is like, (laughs) that's crazy. That is totally (laughs) insane. I knew I wanted to uh, train with someone a lot. I knew. So I picked Lisa because she lives close to me. I knew that, you know, she would have, have the time to devote to it. So yeah, make sure you're all in with your partner. Um, the partnership is what's going to make or break your performance. And there's, there's people that haven't finished the rally because they couldn't get along with their partner. And so like <laughs> pick a good partner, someone, yeah. you know, that you can get out in the dirt with and survive the eight days with and still be friends at the end. I mean, that's yeah. our, that's always been our number one goal is to maintain our friendship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. 
I like it. I like it a lot. Jimmy, what's your words of advice for everybody? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Don't start a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Drive yeah. to all the time on. It's so yeah. fun. It is. It's a lot of fun. And the best part about the podcasting is meeting people like you guys, yeah. right? Like we would never have sat down with you two to sit down and talk for an hour and 20 some odd minutes, Oh my gosh! you know, to <laughs> discuss a, a race that's happening. Competition rally. Com- sorry, competition <laughs> rally that's happening, you know, dedicated to all women, right. And pushing them forward. So, I mean, yeah, I, podcasting is fun, but that's not my advice. I guess my advice would be go out and try something new. Mm-hmm. Right. Like this mm-hmm. isn't something that you guys would do on your daily lives. Right. You know, you guys mm-hmm. both do different things for work or life in general. And Go experience something new. Go try something new and push yeah. your limits. Learning is living. Mm-hmm. Yep. I like that. I like so, some really cool stuff um, that we've learned today. We learned what uh, cooler cloths were. We learned <laughs> yeah. some other fun things. So uh, thank you both of you for coming on. Seriously, spending Thanks some time, um, especially so close to the competition, the rally where, mm-hmm. you know, maybe you guys should be doing other pre- pre- preparations <laughs> kind of thing. I don't know. Like, I mean, yeah, I have a monster to do list. <laughs> yeah, right. I can only imagine. It'll be um, fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. Don't stress the little things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, if you guys want uh, listeners out there want to give them feedback give have the questions for them you guys can call in we have a great voicemail line that we do on fridays um, 916-345-4744 uh, well that number is also down the show notes so you guys can call in and if there's a question for lisa or lonnie we can probably take the voicemail forward it over to them and uh get some answers for you guys. If you have questions for me and Jimmy, you guys know how to do that we go over that every episode that's all i got great episode love having you two on best of luck to you next Thank week you. Uh, you. it's going to be I think an adventure filled week. Hopefully you conquer all the challenges that are thrown at you and just drive to all the checkpoints. That's all we have just, to do. <laughs> yeah. Just drive to the checkpoints. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And with that, my friends keep crawling. I got one for you. Ready, sir. Why was the mermaid good at math? Uh, I don't know. Because she had an algae bra. Okay. (laughs) I don't know what an algae bra would do for your math skills. I don't know either. But (laughs) she had one. That's fun to think about. Yeah. (laughs)